welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And the, it's the biggest YouTube channel about Sudoku somehow. So um, I guess if you know our history, you know we kind of stumbled into this, but it is always a pleasure to bring you another Sudoku and attempt a logical solve. Um, we also have a suite of apps that are available on the links under the video. We have the Sudoku pad where you can load up any um, classic Sudoku at least that you find and some others and um, have a crack at them using our software. Uh, we have merchandise, loads of um, wonderful goods. Some of them even say things like bobbins or knowledge bomb on them and uh, they're available on the links. Oh, I think it's the um, merchandise field. Well, you can see where the merchandise is under the video. Right. Um, also, of course, do check out our Patreon site where we have loads of extra content all the time. And um, this is a fascinating puzzle. Now, Olimar often sends us puzzles for uh, particular commemorations, but he just sent this one anyway. It was a while ago now, um, but we haven't tried it and we're going to today. So when I opened this up, I thought I was looking at R2-D2 probably, but it's called Riddler on the Foof. And um, I think the idea is that uh, this is a house. I mean, I guess these lines, well, actually, yeah, the green lines probably give us the outline of the whole house, don't they? We've got some kind of windows and stuff going on down here and certainly a roof shape up here. So um, maybe this odd green line is the fiddler. Anyway, the rule set, we're combining three different types of and of constraint here, quite regular ones, but it's going to be interesting to see how they interact. We have normal Sudoku rules, obviously. Neighboring digits on a green line, these are German whisper lines, and any two digits that are next to each other on the line must have a difference of at least five. So that is the rule for those. Digits on a gray line must be between the digits in the attached circles. So if this, well, let's say if these were two and seven. No, let's say they were two and eight, then these would have to be the numbers three to seven because they'd all have to be different, but they'd have to come between two and eight. Uh, down here, they're not so helpful. They're just one line long, the, the small ones. Anyway, uh, we also have some black dots. These are crop key dots showing that the digits connected by the black dot must have a one to two ratio. Um, not all black dots are necessarily given, so we can't rely on the negative constraint. But do give this a try on the link under the video. You may be able to judge from the length of the video how easy or hard it is. I have no idea, but I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. Um, yeah, okay, a good thing to know about German whisper lines is that they can't have a 5 on, for the simple reason that if you put a 5 there, what could you put here that was five away from it? You'd have to go down to zero or up to 10. They're not allowed in Sudoku. So if we look at columns one and nine, we can't put five there anywhere. So there must be one up here. Same in column nine. And now we will have used up the fives for rows one and two. That's a sort of X-wing, um, so-called, because you're either looking at a diagonal line connected there or a diagonal line connected there for where the two fives are. Anyway, all of that means that 5 can't be in these cells in row 3, so it must be in one of these. Um, which... Oh, right, yes. Well, remember, there's something... Yeah, there, there's something excluded from each of these types of line there, and, and dot. So, from the German whisper lines, you can't put a 5 on those. In the between lines... You can never put a 1 or 9 on the grey line bits. You could put them in the circles. In fact, you may often have to. But you can't put them on the grey line bits because they can't fall between anything. And these black dots can never have a 5, 7 or 9 on them, in fact, because... Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Because they can't be in a ratio of 1 to 2 with another Sudoku number. So, yes... This green line can't have a 5 on. These black dots can't have a 5 on. So the 5 in the central column is in one of these three digits. And if we know it's in one of those three and also in one of those three, it must be at the intersection. This is the 5 at the bottom. So 
Let's put that in, remove the other pencil marks, and we have a digit. Not a very helpful one, I suppose, but nonetheless, that's correct. Yes, I was also just thinking about when I highlighted that area of the black dots. Where do 5, 7 and 9 go in the middle row? Well, not on a black dot. So 5, 7 and 9 are confined to those cells. But we've said 5 can't be on the green. So 5 must be in one of those cells. For the middle row. Now, I think we're going to have to do something with the German Whisper line. I mean, you can look at this. It, it, it's not the case that these all have to be different. In fact, they can't possibly be because there's nine of them. Um, and you know that these are extreme, but they could actually be three and nine, say, on one end. Then you'd have four, five, six, seven, eight there. I have a feeling they're going to end up being 1 and 9. I have a feeling these are 2, but feelings are not logic and we don't use them. Um, yeah, so, right. I mean, the next question after 5s on German whisper lines is where do 4s and 6s go? They're harder to place because than, than the other digits because you can put a 4 on a line, but the number next to it always has to be 9. Now, it would be quite easy to assume that the only place to put a 4 on one of these lines or a 6 is at the end. But be careful, because actually these knuckles where they turn could also, if you had a 4 here, you could have a 9 on both sides of it without clashing. Oh, actually, you couldn't. Oh, that's rather pretty. I, I had not seen this when I began that explanation, but if you were to put a 4 there, get 9 there and 9 there, but where's the 9 in column 3 going to go on one of these between lines where we've just said it can't? So actually, that must work with 6 and 1 as well. So these can't be 4 or 6. And in fact, the only three positions where 4 and 6 can go in column 1 and 9 are in the empty cells and the end of the line. So we have a 4, 5, 6 triple, in fact, now. So one of these lines ends in a 4, the other ends in a 6. So one is low and one is high. Now, another thing we can do along German whisper lines when we know what one of the digits on them is, is mark which ones are below 5 and which ones are above 5. Now, I don't know that this time, but I know those are different. So let's alternate the cells up here. Those must all be... I don't know what to use. Let's use red and yellow, say. So if I make those all red, um, and these are yellow. Now, that means that if this is low, this is high, this is low, this is high, this is low, this is high, this is low, etc. But it could be the other way around. But I know that that's different from this one, because they're a 4-6 pair. So again, I can highlight the alternating cells. It makes a very pretty house, actually. That's that's very good. Um, but what does that tell me about these lines? It doesn't, doesn't let me look across the middle. But now, look, I've used 4, 5, 6 up. What's going on the other cells in these lines? Yeah, next to the 4 and 6 are going a 1 and 9, yes. Because that's what a 4 has to have next to it, is a 9. Now, if you... Let's assume these are high, and that's a 9. We've also used the 6 up in one of those cells in that triple. So these would be 8 and 7. If, on the other hand, red is low, these are going to be 2 and 3. And they must form a pair. Same over here. On one side, it's a 2-3 pair. On the other side, it's a 7-8 pair. Oh, and the number in between a 7-8 pair cannot be 3. It could only be 2. And the number in between a 2-3 pair cannot be 7. 
Oh, but it could be the number in between a two three pair can't be seven, it can be eight or nine. Oh, right, it can be one though here. Oh, bother, okay. Anyway, it can't be three or seven in the middle. It clearly can't be four or six sitting in that position. It's that the same isn't true here. These could be a two, so oh, I thought that was going to be useful, and it's not. But there is a two, three. Ah, look, yes, one of these is a two, three pair, but both of them well, either of them, that's the way to put it, are seeing a black dot. Now, what can that black dot be in a cell, in a box where two and three have already gone? It can't be one, two, two, four, or three, six. It would have to be four, eight. Oh, right. So wherever there's a two, three pair, whichever side it is, there's a four, eight in the, in the, uh, on the black dot. So this can never be eight, actually. Ah, and these were going to be, yes, where were we going to put five, seven, and nine in the middle row? That's really vital. They couldn't be on these cells because of the black dots. So one of these end cells is a nine, and this is a five, seven pair in the middle. Wait, I mean, again, interesting deduction, but doesn't really take us forward dramatically, does it? Um... But one of these is a nine. So the nines are a sort of X-wing there. We can't have any other nines in rows five or eight or in columns one or nine. Because one of those middle cells is a nine and one of these is a nine in row eight. I'm just noticing the extraordinary almost complete symmetry of this puzzle. Whatever we were to fill in throughout the puzzle must be reversible through a central mirror of the central row, the central column, I mean, um, except for this bit of line. That is the fiddler on the roof, if you like, that is going to disambiguate. What I'm trying to suggest is that whichever way you fill these in, you could presumably reverse the grid round the other way, swap column one into column nine, keep it the same way up, but um, and the same for column two and eight, column three and seven, column four and six, except for the fact that that must break this constraint on those two cells alone. I don't know how to use that, but oh, I mean, it's interesting to note, if not to actually use. Right, now, come on, let's think about column one and nine again. I think we're, we're getting somewhere here. So. Oh, sorry, there comes the drilling again. Um, didn't expect that today. Right. Five. Oh, no, let's... Right, let's think about the between lines. Where do one and nine go in box two? I told you that one and nine can never be on a gray line. Well, they've got to be in those three cells. Ah, and these two are both high or both low because of the way they alternate along this line. So they cannot actually both be, they can't be one and nine. So one of the one nine pair is in that cell. That's really interesting. Um, the other one is in one of these. And is this right? Oh look, nine has to be here somewhere. It can't be on a black dot. That's in one of those cells. And there's definitely a nine in one of those cells. So we're going to end up with a nine in one of those. I bet it's in a circle, but I don't know. No, hang on. What's going... Oh. Honestly, I tell you these fascinating facts, then I don't use them. Look at column three and column seven in terms of the between lines. Where do one and nine go? And we can do it again because seven of the cells in each of these columns 
cannot be 1 or 9 because they're a grey line. So there's a 1, 9 pair in those places. Oh, and we know the colours of them. Because that's... Yeah, this one is red. I don't know whether red is high or low, but I know it's different from yellow. But that's red. This is the other one nine in the same column, so that's yellow. This is red. And the red one nine is in those two cells, has to be in one of those two. Oh, can, yeah, it could be there. Oh, bother. Um... And the yellow one nine is there, could be here, but it could also be here. So, okay, that wasn't, I thought we might get a coloring boost there. Five has to be in one of those two cells because it can't be on these black dot cells. Um, now, we said that one side we've got a 2-3 pair. That is giving us 4-8 on a black dot. The other side we've got a 7-8 pair. Oh, hang on though. Yes. Yes, one side, right, one side we've got a 4-8 pair. Let's say it's that side. Let me just fill it in as though we knew that's a 4-8 pair because that's a 2-3 pair. We don't. I will take it out in a moment. But if we did, that's a 4-8 pair. This can no longer be 8-4 or 4-2 as a pair. Now, the interesting thing also is that if that's a 4-8 pair because that's 2-3, then this is 7-8 and that is 1 or 2. And that means this can't be a 1-2 pair either and has to be a 3-6 pair. So I don't know which way round this works, but it must be the same either way round. And this is a 3648 triple, in fact. So I won't take them out. I'll fill in the extra possibilities. That's a three. So this is one, two, or nine. It can't be nine because of the black dot. And this now is one, two, or four. And they're both low. So now can we crack the low high parity thing? Um this cell is different from that cell, which is different from that cell. So these two are the same. Right, so these can't all be low because then you'd have used up all four lows and you've clearly got to have one on the German whisper line at the bottom of column five. So that's high. And there's, there's our second digit in the grid. That, that's taken a while. But one of those, well, that is a nine. Um, this is high. Oh, I can't colour... OK, well, I can colour these. The reason I wasn't using blue and orange is because I didn't know what colour would become high and what colour would become low. But now I know that that is high, and I would normally use orange for high. Uh, these are low because one of them's a 1. These are high because of the lows. These are low. Oh, these... Right, these are different from each other because of the German whisper connection. And now we will need one more high and one more low. So these are different from each other in terms of height and lowness. So it must be a 4-8 or a 3-6 pair there to achieve that. Oh. Well, this can't be a four because we can't put a nine on. Oh, actually, I was going to—I was looking at that nine, saying it can't be there. But we've got a one nine pair in the row, so that can't be one or nine. So that's not six either. Um, so if that's a three, this is seven or eight. If that's an eight, this is two or three. Oh, this can't be four or six either. Where are four and six going to go? in the central column. They can't go here. They can't go here or here or here or here. They actually can't go at the top either. Why can't four or six be at the top? Because these two would have to be the same. So the only places for four and six are those two cells. We know which 
goes where? Four there, six there, that puts three there, two, this can't be two or three or seven now, that's an eight. So this is low, is a one, and we've got a seven at the top of the grid. Seven is a lovely number to have there because that makes that a one, two pair. Seven's not allowed to see any other numbers than one and two. This, unfortunately, can be six, seven, or eight. And the old fiddler. Um, but that's a start, isn't it? We've got the whole central column done suddenly. Right, this is a 3-8 pair because it sees 4-2-6, a 5-7 pair, and a 1-9 pair. And therefore, they're connecting to 4 and 6 through their black dots. So these are from 2, 5, 7, and 9. This is a 1-9 pair now. Yet again, 1-9 acting as pairs everywhere. They have turned up in those circles. I haven't ruled them out of those yet. Yes, I can. Oh, lovely. Yes, that can't be 1-9 because it's yellow and there's a yellow there. What, what I thought was lovely was it was looking at a yellow and a red 1-9. But anyway, that can't be 1 or 9, that can't be 1 or 9 because of that. So the 1 and 9 in this row, surprise, surprise, are in the circles. And in fact, we can colour them. I might as well do that. I'm not using the blue-orange, definitely low, definitely high colour scheme. I'm using the yellow-red, unknown, but hopefully soon to be attributed colour scheme. Let's finish off with the blues and oranges down here, actually. So that keeps going. Um... None of these other pairs I've marked are definite, so... Oh, they don't work as well. Right. Now, what else? One of this is a 2-3 pair with a 9 here. Where that happens, it's 2-3-9... 4, 8, 1, then we'd have 5, 7, and 6 to place. I don't know how that works. Um, and then the other side, it's 7, 8 with 1 or 2. This is 6, 3. Oh, so four, yes, in this row. Oh, look, I've got a three eight pair that I'm not using. Right, three eight pair taken out of those, when then we're gonna end up with a four five pair in the row. The four is obviously where the three six pair applies. Because it couldn't sit with the four eight pair is what I mean there. Wow, this is quite complicated now. I mean, as if it hasn't been before. Um, right, these can't be one or nine. So again, and they can't be four, five, six either because they're seeing those triples in their columns. So again, they're from two, three, seven, and eight. So are th no, these could be one and nine. Could they though? No, they couldn't be nine because nine appears here so can they be one two seven and eight they can't be three because of that actually i don't know this just isn't giving me anything is it how am i doing on ones and nines i've got loads oh those can't be nines because of the one nine pair here so there's going to be a 9 there and a 9 there. There's going to be a 1 also in those cells and a 1 there. Do I know which of those is 1 or 9? I don't think I do. Oh, look, my goodness, I've placed a 2 there and not... Ah, right. So now I do. I've... Simple enough, isn't it? Take, look at that too, and suddenly you've got a 1-9 pair. Right, so those can't be 1s. So I've got 1-9 pairs in the columns. I've sort of got almost all 1s and 9s marked everywhere. Do we know here? 
there must be one each of one and nine. Well, there must be a yellow one over this side and a red one over this side. They're in the circles. I don't know how to use that. Right, I still haven't got to the point. I bet that's going to end up being a six to force a one there, which will disambiguate the middle columns. But, you know, betting is not knowledge. Um, two, seven, eight. So... Oh, there is a three in one of those two cells because this is a two three pair one side or the other it's also a seven eight pair one side or the other so in fact those can't be two or seven they are now three or eight wherever they're three this is four eight wherever they're eight this is four six what does that mean We've got two, five, six, and seven left to put in row four. Oh, this is hard. I don't understand quite how it works. Um. Sorry, I'm really straining around here. Now, if that's not, well, it could never have been one or nine. This can still be anything, including three and seven, can't it? I mean, it can't be one, nine or five. Actually, it can't be four or six either. So again, these are from two, three, seven and eight, which doesn't quite butter my parsnips, unfortunately doesn't resolve anything is what I mean. Um, two, five, six, and seven still to put in in row four. That's what I said. Might as well mark it, having thought it. I was going to say, may maybe these can't be eights anymore, but that's not true because we've still got nines to place in it. Think two of these circle ends, so it doesn't get it done. Have I got any pairs in columns four and six? I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a quintuple, a one, two, five, seven, nine quintuple in both. So the others are from three, four, six, and eight. I mean, Oh, I could have done that from box two alone. That's not all that interesting then. Um, they won't be four and six as a pair, but that's not helpful. Oh, my goodness. What on earth can we do here then? Still have to do a bit more on these top and bottom something. That is two, three, seven, eight sets. Surely something is giving there. If this is eight, seven, then we know it's two here and three here. Ah, so wherever, whichever side it's eight, seven, the two is down here now. So that must be the three and can't be the two. Ah, so one of these sides, there's a three. Wherever the three is low on these, the seven or eight is high on these, but it can't be a seven anymore because of the three. So seven is now restricted to one of those two cells in row two. Oh, these can't be twos either because they're seeing a one, two pair. So that's a three, eight pair. We can take eight out of there. It's down to six or seven. We know it's going to end up being six. We don't really, but it might. Um, three, eight, nine, one, two. We've got four, five, six, and seven still to go in the row. So they're in those cells. Four, five, six, seven. So one of these is definitely a three, and that means these can't contain a three. One of those is definitely a three now. Um, two must be in one of those cells, which 
In fact, two in these boxes is boxes one and three are confined to those two places. Which feels interesting, but not conclusive. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm really struggling around here, aren't I? Um, so again, I keep getting something more every time I consider that one side or another, that's an 8-7 pair, and the other side it's a 2-3 pair. So I just need to work out which side is which. <laughs> just. I mean, I think that's the whole point of the puzzle, frankly, but uh, I would like to know. Oh, come on, what am I missing here? So, what else? There must be something else going on. We've got a 1-9 pair up there. We've got so a red 1-9 is going to be in one of those two cells. Yellow 1-9, exactly similarly, is going to be in one of those. In this bottom row, with one having gone, two must be in a circle. But it could be outside box 8, or it could be inside it, I think. Maybe I haven't thought enough about these between lines down here. Oh, what about this row? One and nine. Well, they must be in circles. Why haven't, why have I not had that thought before? Why? Brain, what are you doing? Nothing, apparently. Right, let's have that thought now. See if it helps. That cleans up all the one nines apart from in these cells in columns four and six. They're all done. Why aren't they more helpful when they're done? Right. We've still got a five to place in the row. And that means... got a five and a seven or eight to place. Okay, so the four and six, one of them is a high boundary to, to, because a one is a low boundary on one side or the other. The only one that can be a high boundary with five, seven and eight as the possible fills is the six. So where one is low, it's connecting to six, which is high. So I can actually color those two. Four will be connecting to nine. The one, the five will come in between the one and the six because the seven or eight has to come in between the four and the nine. So somewhere down here, we have a one, five, six triple. Now, what does that mean for us? If we had one, five, six this side, we'd have a three there. It doesn't do anything. But we would know what was low and high, wouldn't we, somehow? Um, I can't see how to use it. I cannot see how to use it. In these columns, going back to these columns, we've got three confined there, two confined there, but less eight. No, eight has three possibilities. Okay, well, we, we did something thanks to having one or nine there. Now, down in this bottom row, we definitely have to have nine and two in circles. It's a different situation because the one has gone. Now, they could be there and there. No, nine can't be here or here, or here or here. Right, nine is, sorry, yes, obviously nine is in one of those two places. But is it connecting to the two? I have a feeling it's unlikely, but that's not enough. Um, I can't see what to do again. I just want to crack one of these open. Is that too much to ask? Um, it 
just thinking about four and six. One of those, oh, that can't be five. I shouldn't have marked that as a possible five. One of those two dominoes is a four and one is a six. Oh, sorry, one involves a four and one involves a six. That's what I'm trying to say. What about these cells, which I haven't really done anything with? They can't be one nine. Oh my goodness, am I serious? I've reduced this to a three eight pair and then not realized that wherever it's three, it cannot be seven here. And it obviously can't be three. They can't have a seven in. That's now a three eight pair. This is therefore below it as a two seven pair. So one of these is an eight. The eight, I think I've worked. Oh, so they don't involve a seven. That's what we get to. They are now a five eight pair. Right, where this is seven eight, could be on this side, then this is a three six pair. Okay, so on the other side then, we have two three with a four eight pair. And then this is five. So on the side with the three six pair, which has the eight seven, the four is the other color from what it's sitting next to here. If that's eight seven, that's a four. If that's eight seven, that's a four. Yeah, there's something going on there. What is it? This is vicious, this puzzle. Um, or else I'm missing something. Oh, look, these can't be eights. How about that? Because we've now reduced that to a 3-8 pair. So this is actually a 2-7 pair now. Yes, that's it. Is that it? Which, right, yes. Remember, I just, yes, I just said that wherever this is a four, it's a different color from the cell it's next to. So if that's a four, it's red. And that means yellow is high and four is red there as well. But if those two were red fours, where does four go in column three? It can't do. And that's the point of this cell, not that it's six or seven, that it's not four, which is available over here. So this cannot be the red four, or sorry, this cannot be the four, because it would be red, it would have to be the same as that, and it couldn't fit there. So this is the four. Here we go. We finally got a number off the central spine. That is a four, and it is yellow. And that is a four, and it's yellow, and we now suddenly know that yellow is low. So I'm going to convert all my yellows to blues, all my reds to oranges, and now I know high-low everywhere in the grid, and if I can't finish it now, I'm a monkey's uncle. So we go four, oops, no, <laughs> we go in the right mode, four, nine, two, seven, one, eight, three, Oh, it's lovely to be suddenly filling in digits, eight, one. So we go over here and we go six, one, seven, two, nine, three, eight, three, nine again. Now we know that these, oh, well, we've, okay. Blue is low. So all these blue ones, nines are ones now. Orange is high. So those are nines. Here we had a one, five, six, and a nine, eight, four. So that goes round like that. Now this can't be eight, that can't be four. Oh, this has become a five by what we did with the four. Now they don't have a five in, in fact, three, two. Yes, we know this is now an eight, four pair, and we know which way round they go. This is a three, six pair. I don't know which way round they go, but I do know these don't have six or seven in there, two and five. These are six and seven, that's working. 
That's a six, seven pair, so that's become a two. That gives me a seven over here. That can't be a seven now. Um, this is a five, four pair. This is a five, six pair. That can't be two. The two in this box is over here. Um, that can't be a six. Oh, that's meant to be saying a five, six pair. Sorry, I've used the wrong mode. There we go. That's a four. And that's a four because it's the cell where four could get to. There's probably some other way of seeing that, but it's the way I've seen it. So this is actually a seven. So all my confidence that that was going to be a six and prove how this worked. Ooh, I'm actually a bit nervous now that I've messed up. Um, six there. They can't involve a six. They're a three eight pair. I mean, how are we going to... Oh, I know how we're going to disambiguate columns four and six, or some of them anyway, because we've done that four and six. So uh, we can fill in a three and an eight. We can also correct that six and four and this three and eight at the top. Uh, but we still have that quintuple to do. Now we've done that six, seven, done that two, five. We haven't done this three, six yet. So let's start down here. We've got a two and a four in the circles. We've got a three and a five on the lines. Over here, it's a bit less clear. They're from three, six and seven. And these are from three, six and eight. Okay, that one can't be an eight. So the eight in this box goes here. Eight on the line. So it's got to have the nine on its line. That's useful, I think. Um, why doesn't that sort anything else out? Oh, that's weird. I thought one of those is a seven. I know that. Oh, that nine. Yes, it looks up here. It does all these columns. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant puzzle. That's so clever. So that's not a two. So the two in the row, I don't know. One of these is a two. Oh, come on. This can't be a three, can it? Because what? That couldn't get between anything, so that's a six. So that's a three, seven pair. I still don't know which way round that goes. Um, how can I still be confused at this stage? Well, don't answer that, not harshly. Um, four there, there we go. That makes that a two and that a four. That places the two in the middle box. That now is a three, because it comes between two and four. Oh, that is beautiful. What a puzzle. That is, a, I mean, that is brilliant. I'm so impressed. That is fantastic. Fid Riddler on the foof, indeed. There we go. Thank you very much to Ollie Mar for that. That is a pretty special piece of work, frankly. Um, Absolutely fascinating. I mean, the way I've solved it, it felt very special. There may be other ways of getting there, but that's clever. Really entertaining. Thank you, as always, for watching us on the channel and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.